Conference USA 2017 kickoff presented by Under Armour. Now we look at UTSA and joining us, their head coach, Frank Wilson, in his second year. Frank, good to have you with us, buddy. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for having us. Also joining us today, Josh Stewart, wide receiver. Josh, yes, good to have you here. Okay, I'm going to get your name right. That's all right. I promise, <laughs> okay. Josiah Toa Afa'a. Toa Effa. Toa Effa. Toa Effa. I even have it down that's here. That's all right. <laughs> okay, all I know is my wife's going to look at this and say, ask him how he does his hair. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Um, last year, outstanding season, 6 and 7. You're picked second in the West this year, a little more pressure. But let's go back to last year, going to UTSA's first bowl. That's all well and good, and everybody's all excited. But did you have to temper that excitement a little bit coming into this year? Um. You know what? Coming uh, when coming out of that game, yeah. our our goal was uh, it wasn't good enough to get to a bowl game. Our goal was to go and and complete the job mm -hmm. and win the football mm -hmm. game. Unfortunately, uh, we did we weren't able to do that. Uh, so post game and talking to our team, we recognized the the good and all that we had done, but we knew that was there was work still to be done, mm -hmm. and there was something to build on for us. So when as we approached this year. Uh, the first thing we need to do that starting uh, the 31st of this month, uh, a week from now or so, is, is to get UTSA right. We had a good spring practice. Summer went well. And so now we really have to hone in on developing our roster and the quality depth that will allow us to have success at the back end of the year. So the pressure um, is really not one. We kind of call it ignoring the noise mm -hmm. because you have to earn your way, and we put it upon ourselves to build our team and control our own destiny. What were the biggest focal points in spring for you this year? Finish. Yeah, I, I think when you look at spring, you look at the summer, and you look at this upcoming season, uh, every game we had a year ago uh, in the fourth quarter at, at one point was uh, a two-point game or less. Mm -hmm. uh, never, never beyond that. Now, some of them may have finished greater or lesser at, at the end of the game, but in the fourth quarter, every game, <laughs> all, all, all 12 of them, uh, 13 of them, were a 12-point swing one way or the other at least mm -hmm. going into the fourth quarter. And so I think as we develop our roster and the quality of players that we've recruited and uh, continue to move in the right direction, it'll allow us to finish those games uh, best. I think also going into spring, there was some question about depth at UTSA. And the quote you had after, I feel better after spring in regards yeah. to depth. Yeah, uh, we did. Uh, after spring, we feel even better now that our signing class is here. <laughs> we, yeah, really. we've, we've enhanced our team. It's 30-plus players uh, between the signees and the walk-ons that we have. So uh, we've gotten better uh, from a, a personnel standpoint as well. I go back to your quarterback, Dalton Sturm. He'll, this will be his third year starting. Go back to 2015. It was a baptism by fire. I did probably three UTSA games. I didn't think he was even going to get through the season <laughs> physically. He got beat up so badly. Yeah. How has he impressed you? over the last two years in his uh, toughness? You know, the one thing that you want to, uh, that your quarterback to have uh, or a person in leadership is toughness. Mm -hmm. If you don't have toughness, you don't exist in this sport. At the end of the day, however you slice it, uh, you have to have some toughness about yourself. He possesses that. And uh, what we had to do as a program and as a team, offensively especially, is do a better job of helping him, whether it's mm -hmm. the offensive line, whether it's the receivers, whether it's the quarterback, to allow him to flourish. Uh, this year, we made strides in the, in, in the right direction. Uh, he still has room for growth as well as those other units. Uh, when you look at this summer or this spring, the progress he's made, uh, we're bigger, faster, stronger than we've ever been before. And I think that'll bode well for us this fall. I think one of the problems, though, that, that UTSA has had, giving up sacks, 87 the last two years, 43 last year. Mm -hmm. Is that mechanics? Is it young people? Or is it yeah. mental mistakes or a combination? I think it's a combination. I think at times, um, you know, it could be a blown assignment by an offensive lineman. It could be a back uh, who's supposed to chip or, or, or pick up the, the blitzer. It could be a receiver who supposed to make a break at 10 yards and the quarterback right. has to hold it because it's 12 yards or the quarterback could hold it too mm -hmm. long. And so I think as, as we become a smarter football team, we become a better football team in that the completion ratio or the sack ratio isn't necessarily on one person but on us collectively as a unit. I want to talk about Dalton just one more thing because it's something I wanted to ask you. He had four games where he completed 65% of his passes last year. 
but four where he was under 50% completion. Are you looking for more consistency from him? Certainly. Uh, he's looking for more consistency himself. I think that's the thing that has to happen. You have to look in the mirror, and you have to own it, uh, acknowledge it, and then do the things necessary to, to improve from it. Uh, he's been that for us uh, this spring, this summer, uh, to rectify those things, as well as those other units, meaning the tight end, the offensive line, the back end, the receiver. So we all have ownership and the success and the success that we don't have. Um, at, at that position group. Well, he returned seven of their leading eight wide receivers last year, including J uh, Josh Stewart, who was their leading wide receiver last year with 36 receptions. Talk about the offense now and the tools you have on hand to be successful. Yeah, I, I thought uh, a year ago we were still trying to identify exactly who we were. Uh, you go through spring football and people emerge. Uh, you go through summer and other guys emerge, and then live bullets happen. Right. And the wear and tear and the length of the season takes a toll. And so at some point, everybody in that room has to step forward and be able to contribute. Uh, I think some guys were prepared to do that. Uh, other guys were not. I think now we're in a position that as a, uh, an offensive unit, collectively we're prepared now that the talent gap between the first guy, the mm. second guy, or the third guy is so minute, it will allow us to finish – uh, a drive, uh, a game, a season, and be much more competitive at the back end. Well, since I've been around UTSA, they've never had two complete units on offense and defense mm -hmm. because there was the drop-off. You didn't have yeah. 22 players, maybe 18, mm -hmm. maybe 17, but now it's closer to having 22. Yes, yeah, I think we are. I think uh, two, there's two parts in it. It's the evaluation. It's the development. Once you get them there, you, well, you gotta, you got to identify them. You have to evaluate them. Then you've got to recruit them and get them. Right. Once they get on your campus, now it's paramount that you develop those players. And so I think our staff, whether it's the strength and conditioning staff, whether it's the assistant coaches or the coordinators uh, or the head coach as well, we all play a role in their development. Josiah Taw, EFA, preseason all-conference USA, freshman All-American last season. You set a school record in 2016 total tackles, 115. Was that a surprise for you? the way you performed last season? Um, I don't want to say a surprise. Uh, it's all been a blessing. Um, but my expectations, um, you know, I didn't obviously have a specific number in mind or um, certain accolades, but um, I just wanted to go out there, and, and especially with my red shirt season beforehand, I was mm -hmm. anxious to get out there, um, as I'm sure you could have seen. Yep. Um, yep. I was anxious to get out there and, and just do anything um, and everything possible to, to – help this team how have you handled success because it, it came quickly last year obviously all american this and all conference usa that but you still have to find something to get better at doing mm -hmm. what was that for you Kevin um, from the media's freshman year yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no that i'm just kidding no, no, that, no, hey I, I think there's a lot of truth in that to be honest with you no there there was um i was telling i was telling a reporter earlier um, I think that did help me um, not having to go to an interview Monday morning or not having yeah. to uh, talk to the media after a game, just being able to focus on uh, what I can do better and, and um, improving my game throughout the season, especially my freshman year, just um, getting my feet wet that year. Um, and another thing that, that has helped me handle success is my family, my upbringing, uh, my faith in the Lord, um, staying humble, my family. Um, talks to me all the time. You know, they say, they say, you know, they'll send me articles of this guy wrote this about you or, or uh, this and that. But um, my dad's, my dad's the first one to tell me, you know, don't, don't get a big head. Don't, you know, stay humble, stay grounded, um, stay faithful, um, and keep working hard. What have you worked on to um, get better this year? Um, I think one big thing from last year uh, was my pass coverage and my eye discipline. Um, mm -hmm. Just being able to see the field better, uh, not getting distracted when someone motions across or not getting distracted when a guard right. pulls or s something like that. So uh, those, are, those have been uh, aspects of my game that I've been working on and that I can definitely improve on. Josh, I want to talk to you. Also had the longest reception of the year, 77 yards. You've got a veteran quarterback. You've got an outstanding running back. You've got a bunch of receivers around you that are good. How excited are you about this offense? Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, we're just hoping to continue to build on what we uh, started last year and continue. we got a couple of new guys coming in, uh, and hopefully uh, this upcoming fall camp, they can uh, make their moves, and we can just continue to grow as a team and continue to get better.
within the locker room, was there talk about not being satisfied with one bowl game? Oh, definitely. Uh, that we're not we're not satisfied with uh, losing bowl games. Uh, yep. We 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 go in any game with the uh, mentality to win, and we just want to go out and basically give our all. And we feel that we, if we go out and just trust the process and continue to stay the course, uh, to taking the steps in the right direction, to making the program better, then we, we'll be okay. Let's turn our attention a little bit more on defense. Seven starters returned from defense that made great gains last year. You look at the numbers from 2015 to 16, big, major jumps. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you're satisfied with that. You know, you know, uh, we played uh, several guys uh, up front. You, you know, let's start up front with, uh, you know, whether it's King Newton, Balen Baker, Kevin Strong, those those guys in the interior. It starts up front for us in that interior, and then you go to the perimeter and Marcus Davenport and Eric Banks, those guys who return for us, a young Solomon Wise, who they're, they're bigger, faster, and stronger. Marcus Davenport is 258 pounds when I left. He played at 220 a year ago. Hmm. So uh, it, it's and true. he's also six six. And he's six six. Yeah. So we are bigger, faster, stronger than we than we have been. When you look at the ability to, uh, and I started with this, Ron, uh, just talking about uh, coaches' assessment that when you take uh, a jo Josiah from defensive line and bump him back to linebacker, you take a Lakel Bass from safety and bump right. him forward. You take a guy who says, Coach, all I want is a chance, and you say to your team. If you're sincere about that, then we'll, we'll give you that in earnest, that you'll have that opportunity to go to the field because this depth chart is etched in sand. And you'll have a platform to compete for that job. And we give that to a walk-on named Josh Stewart who grabs our attention in, in, spring, fo in, in, in spring football, yeah. continue to progress throughout uh, the preseason, and then as the season goes on, develops a consistency and becomes our leading uh, receiver. And so uh, I think when you look at our team and the development of these young men and each one of the individuals, both defensively and offensively, uh, we've made tremendous uh, strides. From a defensive standpoint, I like us up front. I like our, our linebacker core. We have some experienced guys in the secondary. We have to con continue to develop, to develop the quality depth that allow us to withstand a year. I got one final question because last year I went back and looked at the notes, and one of the things you told me is you wanted Lakel Bass to become a playmaker. Mm -hmm. He ended 2016 as a second leading tackler. Yeah, you challenged him, and he stepped up to the challenge. He did, uh, and you know what? For him, he is a very self-conscious young man. Uh, he wants to to please. He wants to do well. Uh, he had a guy next to him taking snaps yeah. that was getting all the accolades and, uh, and put it on himself that, you know what, we can do this. We can coexist. We can do this together. Let's go chase greatness uh, with one another. And so we're pleased with his progress as well. You guys have been delightful. One quick thing, your schedule, very favorable. Don't play the top teams from the east. You don't play Louisiana Tech. Favorite to win the west until the final game of the year. Mm -hmm. This could be a magical season again for UTSA. Uh, for us, uh, it, it starts uh, the 31st yep. uh, when we report to camp and, and really hone in on forming our identity. Uh, we've, mm -hmm. we've gone through the different phases uh, of a season. We, we'll get here and uh, start fall camp, which will be very challenging for us. And then we'll position ourselves in the, at the back end of uh, August, start turning our attention to uh, a very formidable foe in, in the University of Houston. And uh, then we'll take it one week at a time, one game at a time. Coach, good to see you, my friend. Good to Gentlemen, see you as well. Gentlemen, stay healthy. Yes, Appreciate you stopping by. We